Hi Flosstube, I'm Rachel Stitchy Rach here on Flosstube and also on Instagram. It is Friday the 4th of June and this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch because I like cross stitch. Hi everyone, welcome back uh, if you're a returning viewer and welcome if you are a new viewer. For those of you that have been here before, you'll notice we are somewhere different today and I am a day late in my filming. So as I said last week, it is half term this week and it's now Friday afternoon. I usually record on a Thursday morning, uh, but having my three little cherubs at home has meant that uh, I've been a bit busy. We've had lots of play dates, it's been lovely and sunny, uh, but today it's raining. It's the last day of half term. They are getting the point where they've had quite enough of each other's company and are going a bit crazy. My husband's off work and he's downstairs and I am hiding, literally hiding in the spare room. No one knows I'm here to try and uh, do a quick film. So I'm going to attempt to do it. Uh, the lighting isn't great here. I do look a bit grainy. I think I really do need to sort out this software. Um, and we'll see if any of my uh, darling children break in and disrupt me. But as I said, I haven't got a lot to show you this week because I haven't had a lot of stitching time. So hopefully um, I'll manage to get through this before they decide to come and, uh, and disturb me. But also, hence the slightly less glamorous look uh, I give you, although this is more me on a day-to-day -day basis, it must be said, with my hair swept back and, and less makeup. We went to see some friends this morning. Um, we took our dog. They have two dogs as well. They're all, all three of them are Labradors. And it was pouring with rain. It got absolutely soaked. My feet got soaked. I was freezing. And just as we arrived, I mean, their dogs are quite well behaved, but they're quite large male Labradors. I wasn't looking and he jumped at me. He did knock me back a bit, but I've got a really muddy top, which I'm kind of hiding from view. Um, so yeah, it's been all go. Um, but it has been lovely and sunny and we've been managing to play out in the garden and have lots of outdoor play dates and it's been really nice. Right, on to the stitching. So as I say, I haven't had a lot of time this week. So I have no FFOs, fully finished objects or finally flipping overs. I have no finishes either. And I have only had two whips that I've worked on and I have minimal progress. So it's been a bit of a a shocker on the stitching front. So let's crack on. So the first thing I worked on was my Lizzie Kate Flip It Yearbook August. Um, I worked on this on Saturday at swimming. Uh, and I'm not a lot further than the last time I saw you, but I got a few more bits done. This is on the home straight to a finish. And I think as this week's been half term, there's been no out and about stitching because all the clubs are on half term, I'm not doing school pickups. I'm with my children all the time, so there's no kind of daytime stitching time. Um, but I think perhaps next week when clubs are back in full swing, I think I might get that done. So hopefully I will have a finish on that to show you next week. And the second thing I'm going to show you is my Snoopy Afghan. And I was really hoping last week that I would have that next block finished, but it's not finished. Um, again, little stitching time this week because the children have been at home. But unusually for me, since I last saw you, I have had two days where I've had absolutely no stitching at all. And that is very unusual for me. One is because um, my parents came last weekend. So even the days I have had stitching... I've had less stitching. So my parents came to stay last weekend. They don't live near us. And so we haven't seen a lot of them at all over the last year because we need to stay in each other's houses. Um, the, the journey's too long to just do it for a day. Um, but they came to stay last weekend. So they were here for three nights. And they also looked after the children for the night. And my husband and I went away and stayed in a hotel all by ourselves overnight. It was amazing. So obviously that day, no stitching happened. Uh, but that's, that's, that's good reasons for no stitching. And then yesterday, it was a lovely day. Um, we had a play date in the morning and then yesterday afternoon I had to take the dog to some 
gun dog training and that's a bit of a drive and I got back and my husband had been working and looking after the children and so the house was a bit warm and so just stitching yesterday just didn't happen either so I will show you my Snoopy Afghan but I'm still on the same block I was on last week however what that will show you is how how 90s these are in terms of the stitching so as I've said before I'm doing all different squares on my uh, peanuts or snoopy afghan whatever you want to call it and I'm doing it from some out of print leisure arts leaflets I got from eBay and this is one I'm currently using peanuts cross stitch magnet and I'm currently stitching this snoopy holding a pole with wood stock and last week when I showed it to you, I literally had the very top part of Snoopy's head done. And it was white on white and it was quite difficult to see. So I have made considerable progress since then. But um, <clears throat> this is where I am now. Sorry, it's a bit of a beast. It's a wrangle. So it's a lot more done. So I'm nearly there on the cross stitch, but you can see how much the back stitch makes this. So Woodstock in terms of his four crosses is done and he's just a complete yellow blob and he's going to turn in to that guy and the back stitch really does make these if you're doing any kind of more 90s or 80s cross stitching where the back stitch really really makes a massive difference to how the finished project looks do use the hashtag wait for the back stitching I use that on all these because you just can't tell until the back stitching's on there. I think they just look extremely blobby and not very exciting. So hashtag wait for the back stitching. Oh, so I'm really in, I really want to get him finished, but I'm also really in two minds about what to do because it's now Blackbird weekend and Brenda and Laura. So I really want to spend today and Sunday working on my blackbird and we're staying with some friends so I don't think any stitching is going to happen tomorrow and then I really wanted to spend June having my kind of monogamous June on my ABC Santa so I'm really in two minds as to whether to get this guy finished or whether to just put him to one side for a bit can't decide um so i'll think on that a little bit more i say it's just a very quick and dirty floss tube because yeah not a lot to show and terrified that world war three is about to break out or they're gonna invade um they're lovely but they they've had enough of each other they need to go back to being i will show you my cool new mug this is from I can't remember, parkdesigns.co.uk. I think this was a Facebook or Instagram advert. And I have to hold it like this because I am a lefty. So you can never see the design fully because it's always facing inwards to me. But these are, they do a whole range of these. And I bought one just to see if it was kind of the size of mug I like. And a lot of our mugs are now getting chipped and the glaze is gone. So they need replacing. So we needed some new mugs. So well, I'll have a look and see if I like the size of this one. And the swirls on it, they're actually uh, topographical swirls. So this is the topographical layout, is that what you call it? The, the contour lines of Helvellyn, Red Tarn and Striding Edge, which in the Lake District. And they have the three peaks. They have quite a few in the Peak District. But I just think that's really smart. And I've told you before of my love of maps and how we have a map wall. So, topographical detail like that. I think that's beautiful. So yeah, anyway, I really like them. Um, I'll link them down below. If you're in the UK, they're made in Staffordshire, I think, which is like the home of pottery in the UK. Um, they are UK made. And I really like them. They're nice thickness. Because I like quite a thin mug for my tea. And they, ha they hold a good quantity of tea without being excessive. So I'm going to be ordering some more. So uh, yeah really excited about these so i know a bit off cross stitch topic but we like to talk about our mugs on floss tube don't we that's allowed 
Okay, another slab of tea. Right, so I've shown you my minimal stitching this week. I've dabbled through some very non-committal plans. Um, although I am going to get out that blackbird tonight, so that'll be that will be good. I think we're having a takeaway tonight as well, so hopefully less uh, cooking and clearing up and and all the things. Um, haul. I've got a little bit of haul, but again, it's been quite a quiet week on the haul front as well. So the first thing I've got to show you is my Country Cottage Needleworks sampler of the month came. I'm sorry the picture's so grainy today. I'm going to talk to my husband about using his camera to do these because I think it will give me a better quality picture. So I'm sorry it's a bit bad today. Now, I am on the auto ship through Peakside Needleworks for this series. So this was the latest one and it too sends the 32 count uh, beautiful beige to stitch it on. This is the issue I always have with American monthly series is that I really like this series but this is very very American so they've got like Uncle Sam's on there and I know it's for Independence Day in the States but you know fireworks aren't a thing in the UK in July our fireworks days in November and well I'm really glad for the US that you've got your Independence Day and a written constitution and whatnot you're celebrating your independence from my country. Um, so I don't know what I'll do about this because I do want to stitch this series, but I'm not American. That's just very American. I'm just not American. No offence, I'm just not American. So I'll have to decide what I do. I might try and see if I can change the Uncle Sam's into some kind of strawberry trifle cake thing. I will mull on it. They're not in my immediate stitching plans. I don't need to panic. Um, but yeah, always the problem for me as a Brit with a American monthly series. The, the July one is always a bit um, yeah, just a bit a bit. What's the right word? Just a bit unsuitable for a British household um, and then the only other bit of haul this week is that my punch needle and primitive stitcher sub digital subscription became available for the summer edition I'm not going to do a full flip through uh, I don't punch needle so I don't use any of the punch needle designs um, but I've printed out a few of the the ones that I really liked. There are some other cross stitch designs in there as well, um, but I just picked out the ones that I particularly liked and I thought I'd show those to you. So the first one is Seasons of the Heart Summer by... So we had the pausing again. I am gonna sort out the technology. Um, so the first one is Seasons of the Heart Summer by Janine McGowan of the Blue Flower. This one, I started the spring one of these for Stitch Mania. I love this, I love the strawberries, I love the cat, I love the little beehive in the bottom corner. So I really liked that one. The next one I picked out to show you was Buffalo Plaid Summer uh, by Priscilla of Stitching with the Housewives. And this is also a monthly series in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. Can you hear that? My daughter's just started her piano practice downstairs. Um, she's practicing for her grade one exam. So there we go. Uh, the next one is the Be Kind sampler by Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive Treasures. I really like this sampler and I like that big beehive in the middle. I like the bees. I love bees. Um, my monthly marker on Instagram. For June was a uh, one of my alliums in the garden with one of the bees on it. Um, I love planting things that attract bees to my garden. Uh, next one is Strawberry Fields by Esther. I'm going to butcher this. Esther Marjanovic of Sub Rosa Design. I thought that was just really cute with those blackbirds and strawberries. Lots of strawberries in in this edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. So 
I liked that one. And then the final one I've printed off to show you is by Barbara Anna and it's called Sea Dandelion. And one of my children went, oh mummy, it's a mermaid and dandelions, I love it. Uh, so I think I might have to stitch that on. Just really, really, very Barbara Anna and very cool and pretty. Um, so they're the ones I picked out of my Punch Needle and Primitive Stitch magazine to show you. In the UK you can get either a digital subscription to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, which is what I do, or if you really want a hard copy, I know Patchwork Rabbit do stock uh, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitch. Obviously they take a little while to come in because they ha you have to wait for them to be shipped over here. Um, but they, they do carry them if you're interested in them. And that's all my stitching and that's all my haul and my non-committal plans and the only thing any other things i have to talk about is a little bit of floss tube watching i've managed to squeeze in this week so stitchy sally has done her first floss tube and she was super nervous but she shouldn't have been because she got some lovely projects and her finishing is great and she has a fantastic wall of cross stitch behind her so sally i hope at some point in the future if you decide to film some more you might give us a tour of your wall because the projects behind you look fantastic i watched claire from stitched lit go watch claire she gave me a shout out thank you very much claire so the mutual uh, appreciation society continues uh, she started loads of stuff with me having said she wasn't really going to so go and go and give her a watch i enjoyed it immensely and loved uh some of the projects she started i watched uh mama loves you gb just now actually while i was folding the laundry just folded and put away seven baskets of laundry being a family of five generates endless laundry just my washing machine is never not on I'm gonna um, at some point in the future buy and stitch the hands-on design one that says laundry the never-ending cycle because it is honestly laundry the never-ending cycle is a real thing in my life oh, do you know the most depressing thing about doing laundry is that you know you've just spent you know hour and a half folding it all and putting it all away and I'll just be more to do next week I don't institute naked days in our house I think we cut on cut down on it I don't care if it's a work day just secure washing oh. okay and then did I say watch mum loves you GB yes because that's why I was telling you about the washing and she hasn't done a lot of stitching either because I feel really bad for all the teachers at the moment marking all these assessments in the school, but they're a nightmare. And then I watched a new to me floss tuber. She's clearly not new to a lot of you because she's got about 2,000 subscribers, so I'm last to the party. But I watched Sarah of The Clumsy Stitcher. I've watched three of her videos now. Absolutely love them. And she's got a really nice presenting manner. She's got some really interesting projects. She's done the opposite to me on the opposite side of the country. So she's from Cornwall and lives in Manchester on the west side of the country. And I am from Leeds and live in Kent. So we've both gone from as far south to kind of north, not as far north as you can get, but a good solid northern place to as far south as you can get or vice versa. I really enjoyed watching her and like seeing her kitten. So I'm looking forward to watching the rest of her videos. I started at the beginning. Um, so yeah, Sarah, I've really enjoyed that. Thank you. I can hear footsteps. Someone's coming. So I'm going to say it's been lovely to see you. I know this is very short and sweet, um, but the footsteps are ominous. So I'm going to say have a good week, Stitchers. Bye.